and welcome back to my stream of Aurora 4X. So, where we last left off, we were in the middle of surveying all of Seoul, and we're waiting for our technology to build up a bit. So, now, very importantly, Seoul has a couple of comets that like to travel really, really far. Now, here is the um, Kuiper Belt. Well, you can see this guy's pretty far out, and this guy is covering the comets here. Um, but if we have a look at the comet paths, right, Haley Bob goes all the way out here, and that is about a 60 billion kilometer journey. Um, <clears throat> we are lucky that Brooks is relatively nearby and McNaught Russell too. Uh, both of them have ridiculously long distances. So these three comets you really need to watch out for. If they are all the way out here, there's a very good chance that your uh, geo surveys will take a nice long trip out and then run out of fuel. So very important, keep that in mind. Otherwise, you're all good. So 15 centimeter laser is going to be coming up momentarily. So we'll skip along. Wait for that to finish. <clears throat> so we will be waiting for someone to try and go to Haley Bop and then we're going to make sure that they don't, because even though I'm fairly confident they do have the range, they do have a 200 billion kilometers, um, it's still going to take a while to get there, and it's just not going to be um, that useful. We can always survey it once it comes back into range. So, 20 centimeter, and there we go. Put that in the queue and move along. It does look like things are further apart, so we can actually speed this up a bit and we're going to do five day turns. All right, speed rating of 3,000 is ready. Um, most enemy ships, when it comes to precursors and uh, swarm, uh, swarm you're going to be looking at tracking speeds of about 20,000 kilometers a second. If you can't get that high, you're going to take penalties. Um, the tracking speed bonus only applies to missiles, not fighters and stuff like that. Um, so swarm fighters tend to travel at about 10,000, anywhere up to 20,000 kilometers a second, so you need um, that tracking speed to be able to shoot them down. Um, precursors can easily hit six to 10,000 again. Um, NPRs are probably going to be around um, the 6,000 kilometers mark. Um, sometimes they can be lower because um, the designs are not that great, but uh, you want to be aiming for at minimum 10,000 tracking speed um, now you can multiply that by four. So at the moment, our maximum fire control tracking speed is going to be uh, twelve thousand kilometers. We want to get that up a little bit higher. So um, next up, we have uh, that's in sensors. Next up, we have four. So four is twelve, sixteen. That's sixteen thousand. We're going to want one more if we can um, squeeze that out. Okay, let's keep going. <clears throat> let's see how our industry is progressing. Ah, we have unused construction, something finished a while back. I'm just going to stop that. Uh, polish off that military, military academy already. 18th of December, only a few months, that's fine.
it's always good to go over your production uh, every once in a while, especially if nothing's happening for a while, because if you've forgotten to uh, do something, then you're very likely uh, to be just wasting your production. Math job is going to get done quickly, so we're going to up our mines. We're going to set that to 40, and the other one can be 40. So 40 each. And do we need anything? We want. research labs, that's what we want. <clears throat> now we do have an odd number, so we'll do one first. And then we will do, let's go for another 25. So that will give us 50 labs in total. It's going to take it a while, so it's not a big deal. Keep going. Okay, so this is what we're after. The order is not possible. Um, that tells us that it is time to start doing graph surveys. Graph. Uh, just going to make sure that none of them are going to be trying to go out to Ali Bob. Nope, it looks like it's too far. Perfect. So now that we've done our geo survey, we can go have a look and see what we have. So, uh, well, let's, okay, so what are our key minerals? So we need titanium, we need boronide, and we need gallocyte. So, Tritanium, uh, Brooks is going to be good because it's got, got lots of Corundum and Boronide, so we're going to bag Brooks. We hit Create Colony, and that will automatically create an empty colony um, on the uh, body that you select. Um, UX25 has almost 100,000 Tritanium. Definitely want that one. Uh, Rainmouth, uh, that's a comet. Doesn't travel too far, but it's got plenty of macassium, which we used for research labs. So we'll definitely bag that one. Um, Cromelin has gallocyte and boronide, so we'll grab that one, as well as the titanium. Swift Tuttle, fantastic deposits. Great neutronium as well, which is used for shipyards, so that's very useful. And Saurium is always nice. Uh, Comma Solar has Gallocyte as well, which we need, so we'll grab that. And McNaught Russell as well. So basically just grabbing all the comets, really. Um, let's see what we've got for Gallocyte. Do we have anything nice? Uh, this one here looks nice. Got a good chunk of Uranium. Um, not much of, and not, not very much of anything else, but it's got a decent amount of everything, which is nice. Um, so, yeah, we'll tag that one. Not too much of anything else. Now, here we go, look at that. 300,000 units of Gallocyte, or close enough to, definitely want that one. It's 0.8 as well, which is very nice. Um... New Neujmin, 68,000, 150,000 uranium, um, good amount of uranium and corundium and cobamite with good rates, definitely bag that one. Uh, Temple 1 has 22,000 gallocyte, but it's also got lots of neutronium and a bit of sorium, which is good, grab that one. Uh, Ganymede, 5 million gallocyte, wow. That is nice. The Venderite has 3 million, but it's 0.1, so not that great. But the Gallocyte is absolutely incredible. We're pretty much never going to run into engine troubles. We, we could probably, we could, there's enough Gallocyte Gallus here, really, to run, basically create all of our ships using stealth engines. Um, but 
still. Um, tritanium, what have we got for tritanium? We've already bagged all the good ones, so that's fine. What have we got for geranium? Uh, we've got good amounts everywhere. Now, civilians will automatically um, go for high deposits of geranium, uh, so they will build their own colonies um, here, there, and everywhere. But I think for the moment, I'm not, uh, I'm not a fan of how much wealth they take. So for now, I'm going to grab all the richest deposits because it just ends up costing you way too much, and you, it's a major pain in the neck. So seven hundred thousand geranium. That is really good. And 170,000 Vendorite. That is also really good. we we'll definitely grab that one. Uh, 2.3 million on Eris. Definitely grab that one. Um, <clears throat> 47,000 Haley's. That's not that great. But look at that. 2.8 million on EO and 2.2 million Macassium and 2 million Corbomite. That is wonderful. All right. That one we can lead to the civilians. This one they're probably not going to take, but we can always oh, we'll grab a bit later. Now Venus is interesting. Venus actually has something about 0.1. Venus almost always has massive quantities, but they're always almost always very very low uh, accessibility. Um, so 23 million, but 0.1. That's going to take forever to mine. Same with all the others. Um, the geranium might be might make it worth it, but mm, it's not special. Uh, neutronium, do we have anything uh, incredible? Not really, but we don't need much right now. Corbomite, we already got the good ones. That's all fine. Uh, we already looked at Tritanium, Boronides. Yeah, we'll grab that one. That's got a really nice amount. <clears throat> Macassium, do, how, do we have anything with Macassium? Um, we already have the really good ones, so we'll grab Van Beesbrook because it's got the neutronium in good amounts as well, so that's nice. Vendorite. <clears throat> uh, we already got all the good ones, so we'll move along. Sorium deposits. Saturn has 57, 58 million, which is good for when we eventually get fuel harvesting. Uh, same with Uranus is not that great. I might want to drain that one out first. Uh, wild and Wolf. We'll grab Wild because it's got a chunk of uranium and Venderite. So we'll grab Wild. Uh, the rest can be done later. Uranium. We already got the best deposit anyway. Corundium. Corundium is used for mines, so. Pretty much any deposit is good, um, but we've already got the good ones. And Galasite, we've once again got all the good ones. So um, this is actually a really, really good system. We've got a lot of um, really good, large, high-quality deposits, which is really nice. So that is going to be absolutely fantastic now there are a few other things that we want to grab so we want to grab a few planets for colonies um, so we'll go ahead and grab drop a colony on mars and we'll drop one on luna Uh, Luna and Mars are very easy to colonize. They uh, so Mars has a 1.6 temperature factor, and it, all it needs is a breathable atmosphere, and to warm it up a little bit. Um, Luna is pretty much exactly the same. Stick a bit of oxygen, warm it up, and you're good to go. Contrast that with Mercury, which has a surface temperature of 427, so you would have to cool that down by a lot and add in oxygen, uh, which is going to take a very long time. Venus, um, it might not seem like much with the 17 temperature factor. It's about the same as Mercury, but your atmosphere factor is through the roof. Uh, it has an atmospheric pressure 1 of 100. That's 100 times the atmosphere of Earth. If you have a look up here, we can uh, our population can survive a maximum of 4. 
So you have to remove 96 atmospheres um, of nitrogen and carbon dioxide out of Venus before you even have a chance of colonizing it. Um, very importantly, you're going to have to remove more than 96 atmospheres because you have to remove some to make way for oxygen and to make way for any potential greenhouse gases you might need or anything like that. Um, so terraforming Venus uh, is completely impractical and unless you want to do it as a vanity project, don't even bother. So we've got the two planets that we really like, so we will go ahead and look into our terraforming module. So once we get some labs, we'll go ahead and get that sorted out. So uh, we've got mines. We'll wait for these to start to run low a little bit before we start moving mines away. And we will go ahead and <clears throat> let it run. Uh, maintenance failure. Our first maintenance failure. Okay, so with maintenance, okay, so it's it's rolled against its maintenance clock. It's been halfway through its lifespan. It's rolled its maintenance clock, and it's determined that uh, it suffered a failure. It's rolled against uh, the components, and it's the engine. Um, so it suffered a maintenance failure because we have um, 75 main, uh, MSP worth of worth of supplies. Uh, then. Um, it's automatically repaired back to fully functioning state and those supplies have been taken away. If we didn't have those supplies, then it would have broken and because we only have one engine, our ship would be dead in the water. Um, if we then do restock maintenance supplies, we would be able to re repair it using damage control, uh, assuming we actually had much of a damage control, which we don't, but um, the principle is the same. Without, uh, if we don't have enough MSP to repair it at all, so if the maximum storage was below the cost of the repair, then we would have to either tow it back to a shipyard for repairs or uh, bring out a ship with a hangar large enough to dock the entire ship to. Um, unless you have something like that set up, Make sure that your uh, ships are capable of uh, repairing themselves. So, we keep going. All right, near ultraviolet laser. We'll see if we can get ultraviolet. It's only 8,000 points. And we're producing four. It's a two-year tech, so that's fine for now. Ultraviolet gets some really nice range, especially early on, so we do want to get to at least that level. Uh, Research Brigade Headquarters, that's fine. That's just a logistics guy working. Alright, mass driver is complete. We'll go ahead and shunt some of that industry. Okay, it's already moved to the research lab, so that is fine. <clears throat> Oh, we got a new scientist. Who did we get? Bio another biology scientist. Useless. We'll move along. Ah, but we have found our first jump point. There it is. she is. So we'll need a jump ship to eventually go through. One of these guys will go through it. There are going to be five, uh, four more jump points that we'll be finding. Um, and we will eventually explore all of those now we do have a jump drive and an engine each so we will throw out another two cameras and we'll move along what's <clears throat> our time 20 minutes got plenty all right there's a second jump point All right, there's a 3,000 tracking gear. 
I'm going to get it up to at least four. Naval officer, that's fine. All right, there's jump point three. <clears throat> Well, for all our explorers, they're doing a really bang-up job. They haven't, they're not complaining about fuel. They've got the entire thing scattered out. They've only suffered one maintenance failure. They found one, two, three, four, all five jump points. So we'll let them wrap up the grav survey first. There's capacitor. And they've, oh, they're only a little bit past about half their lifespan. So overall, very, very pleased with their performance, uh, which is... Excellent. Uh, we'll get capacitor charge. And we'll go for 0.5 fuel. <clears throat> we're going to need very fast ships, so that we're going to need a much higher power modifier. And we're also going to want uh, the best fuel efficiency possible. So we definitely want that fuel efficiency tech. Okay, trundling along. Okay, fire control range. Go for 32, that one's not bad. How's our industry doing? Pretty good. Manufacturing is fine. We're getting more and more mines, which is excellent. I've got 123. I think we can start thinking about getting some of our shortages resolved. So Tritanium is going to be a big one. So let's go find... Here we go. Brooks is lovely. Where's Brooks at the moment? Really far out. Let's not bother with that one. Uh, this one has 91,000 Tritanium, so I think we're going to go for this one. So, let's see if we can prompt some of these guys to do something. And we're going to get 50 automated mines. And we'll supply 50 here, and a mass driver as well. We'll see if we can get them to do something. Maybe build us a little ship. Was that a scientist? Looked like a scientist. Defensive systems. We have a scientist for defensive systems. Excellent. Now, this one, I'm actually going to rename her. You're all welcome. Okay. All right, we definitely want to put them to work. So let's go ahead and get some armor attack. Um, we don't need as much labs on this one. Or... That one. So we'll give him four labs and throw them on armor. Might as well get damage control as well. We're not going to bother with shields just this second, but we will need that uh, in a short moment. <coughs> ah, looks like they're finally starting to complain about fuel. But that's fine. They'll wrap up the last two jump points and then head on home. Now I started to interrupt though. And we got a new census uh, scientist. And Marie Kraus.
There we go. The Mark Aronson is done. So we'll wipe his default orders, take them to Earth, refuel. Uh, yes, resupply and overhaul. So you've got two ratings here. This is how long your ship has been away from dock, 38.4 months. Um, and as long as this is below your deployment time, um, you're not going to have any problems. As, it's, as it exceeds your deployment time, morale is going to decrease. It can, will only decrease down to 25% of your total morale, um, but it's going to impact every aspect of your, um, at least, military ship. Maintenance clock is how many years your ship has been away. So they usually line up. Um, an overhaul will rewind this. So it is possible that, for them to not line up. So if you go park it above a planet, um, it will stop the maintenance clock, but it will decrease the crew because they get shore leave. Uh, if you have it above a maintenance facility that can support it, it will stop the clock. But you need an overhaul to actually rewind it back down to zero. The higher this goes, the more likely the ship will actually fail. So the annual failure rate and the incremental failure rate will actually go up as the maintenance clock gets higher and higher. So eventually you're going to get failures like every single five day period and it's your ship's just going to break apart into nothing. So do make sure that you keep your ships maintained. How long for time? A few more minutes. Excellent. Okay. <clears throat> and we'll probably get George, where is he going? All the way out, but we're fine. It's using 1% every five days. Is that going to be enough? Maybe. Yeah, it should be fine. Yeah, the other two are complete. There we are. We will now send George to refuel, resu resupply, and overhaul. So refuel will uh, take fuel from this from the planetary stockpile and add it to itself up to maximum. Resupply will do the same for maintenance supplies and overhaul does the overhaul thing. Um, activating the activate transponder will turn the, the transponder on and off for the ship itself at that location. Survey is fairly straightforward. Detached on survey ships will basically drop off any tankers if you have them or anything like that. Um, send message you'll pretty much never do. All it really does is it will send a notification here uh, when it completes, when it actually hits it. So if you tell to send a message at a location, it will notify you that, uh, that it has completed the job. It can be useful, but a lot of the time you probably won't use it. Uh, Resupply. Uh, Picket uh, will basically kind of park it. Um, extended orbit will orbit at a distance that you define. And... Right, so extended orbit will orbit it at a distance you define. Picket will orbit it at one kilometer per second, or something like that. Um, I, I don't really use these. They're not really that useful. Move to and follow are basically your um, go-to ones. Um, so follow will tell it to follow it at that distance, and it will maintain that order until you tell it otherwise. Join will take this task group and put all of its ships into that task group and then get rid of this task group. Absorb will do the opposite. It will go to this task group and then suck all the ships out of it and put it in itself and then remove that task group. Okay. And that is time. So once again, we'll take a break and continue on in the next episode.